Hey guys, Terra Watcher here. Most of the money that people invest in the Terra ecosystem goes to one of two places. Either it's on Anchor or it's invested in Luna. Most people don't buy governance tokens or NFTs in the Terra ecosystem. Those are popular, but by far the most value in the ecosystem is either in UST, sitting on Anchor, or it's in Luna. Those are the two biggest investments in the ecosystem. The funny thing about those investments is they're diametrically opposed. Think about it. People love Anchor because it's low risk, because uh, it's stable and it's got a reliable yield. Also, people love Luna because it's very high risk. It's got a lot of volatility and there's a lot of potential upside with Luna. Uh, those are the two big, uh, big, biggest investments. Um, but, but they are diametrically opposed. Like in the Terra ecosystem, there's not really anything in the middle. And uh, when you take any kind of spectrum, like most people are gonna be in the middle, right? Most people are not gonna be on either end, they're gonna be in the middle. So I think probably most people would like a product that combines the stability and reliability of Anchor with the price appreciation of Luna. And that product now exists. Uh, that product is gonna be called Lust. Nebula Protocol is going to make a cluster of assets and it's going to contain AUST and Luna, and then they're going to mint cluster tokens, which will represent shares of that cluster, and people thereby will be able to get exposure to both. And I think this product is going to be really huge. Um, I'm really excited about Nebula Protocol overall, and I'm also excited about their Genesis cluster, Lust. Uh, that's why I'm making a video about it. So uh, this video is going to be all about Lust. It's going to be the first in a three-part series about Nebula Protocol. Uh, the second video will be tomorrow. The third will be the day after. And then uh, on March 10th, Nebula Protocol is going to have its full launch. And you'll be able to uh, contribute assets into the cluster and mint cluster tokens for Lust for the first time. Um, so before I get started, um, I have produced this series of videos with support from Orbital Command. Orbital Command is a community validator. They are trusted by the community, they have low fees, and Orbital Command um, team members are genuinely committed to decentralized money, just like the rest of us. Um, Okay, so Lust. Like I said, I'm excited about Nebula. Also very excited about their Genesis cluster. Um, Lust, I think, is probably going to be, like, Nebula is going to have a number of cluster, clusters, a bunch of clusters, but Lust is going to be the first, and I think it's going to be the biggest, which makes sense because Lust combines the two biggest assets in the whole ecosystem. So what's it going to do? Like, it, it's going to be a gateway into Terra for newcomers. It's going to give you auto rebalancing with dynamic weights. That's very exciting. You're going to be able to lend it and collateralize it. It's going to minimize, minimize, it's going to minimize taxable events. And get this, it's even going to help defend the peg. So like, that's just my list of reasons why Lust is great. And in the video, I'm going to be explaining these things. So first of all, uh, what is Lust? It's going to be a derivative token that's backed by roughly roughly 30% Luna and 70% AUST. Um, so it's going to be like the share, uh, like a share of an ETF, basically, like this cluster is going to have all the assets, the cluster token is going to represent a share of the assets. Uh, so the price of the cluster token is going to reflect the inventory assets in the cluster. Uh, therefore, um, the gains and losses of the Lust cluster token are going to be less than Luna, but more than AUST, because it's going to combine the two. So I think it's going to achieve a happy medium between the two. Um, so let's let's compare Lust with some other ways of investing in the Terra ecosystem. Obviously, if you had $1,000, you could put it all into Luna. That'd be great. Um, personally, that's what I would do if I could only invest $1,000 in the Terra ecosystem, all on Luna, for sure. Uh, but lots of people are conservative. Uh, for lots of people, the only reason that they're in the ecosystem at all is Anchor, because Anchor is so big, it's got so much trust, so much integrity, and it's got that, well, it kind of sounds bad to say it, but it's got that subsidized yield. Um, so a lot of people would just put $1,000, their $1,000 on an Anchor, but uh, what you could do, if you wanted to get exposure to Luna while also maintaining 
a sizable um, UST position on Anchor, you could just set up your portfolio with 70% um, in Anchor, sure, and 30% uh, in Luna. The problem is you have to rebalance, right? Because if you didn't rebalance this portfolio, let's be real, uh, in a year, it, it would be, it's going to start 30% Luna. If you started at 30% Luna in a year, it would be 70% Luna, right? Or 80%. Or 90% or, or 95% Luna, hopefully. <laughs> um, so if you wanted to maintain this, um, this weighting, you'd have to rebalance, right? And Lust is going to do that for you. So you just hold the cluster token. If you invested $1,000 in this cluster token in the background, it's going to be rebalancing um, the, the value of AUST and the value of Luna relatively, right? So that's one of the big advantages. And, and this is going to be a great product for newcomers because um, I think it would be a bad idea for newcomers to buy $1,000 worth of Luna. It would be pretty volatile. They might not like it. I also think it would be a bad idea for them to buy $1,000 of USD and put it in Anchor because that wouldn't be volatile enough. You wouldn't be far enough into the ecosystem. Um, but Lust, I think that's a fantastic introductory product because you get a little bit of the two biggest assets in the ecosystem. Um, so here's something interesting. It, this probably, it, this may not even interest most people, but it does interest me. Uh, it's important to know how these investments work and um, Lust, it turns out, has, a dynamic, has dynamic weights. So the weights are not fixed at 70% AUST and 30% Luna. In fact, um, the, the assets are gonna be rebalanced as their prices change, but also the weights are going to be adjusted as market conditions change. And that's a really interesting feature of Lust, and it's enabled by Nebula Protocol, of course. So it, here's how it goes. Each asset in the cluster, Luna and AUST, is going to be weighted by the inverse of its percentage of the combined market caps. Another way of looking at that is that uh, if the Luna weight is going to go down when the Luna market cap relative to the AUST market cap goes up, and the Luna weight is going to go up when the Luna market cap relative to the AUST market cap goes down. So it, let, me, let me visualize this for you. So here is the market cap of AUST. That is the amount of UST on Anchor, right? Here is the market cap. There you go. There's the market cap of Luna. So as these two market caps converge, the weight of Luna is going to go up. So as these market caps converge, the whole cluster is going to be increasing its exposure to Luna. As they diverge, the weights are going to change such that the weight of Luna is going to go down. And basically, the cluster is going to be reducing its exposure to Luna. That's how it goes. Uh, you can see it right here in this calculation. These calculations are not that hard. All you have to do to determine the weight of Luna is you say the market cap of AUST, you take that and then you divide it by the product, or rather you divide it by the sum of the market cap of Luna and the market cap of AUST. So that's how you can calculate these weights. Um, this will be beneficial. This is the, the, the dynamic weights are going to be a beneficial feature for holders of this cluster token uh, because it's going to make the cluster token more stable and it, that's what we want here we want stability with this cluster token but also a little bit we also want to capture a little bit of the price appreciation of luna uh, so here's how the weights uh, are going to change so this information just kind of this backdates everything to the start of the year this cluster has not been released yet but if it had been released on uh, january 1st this is how the weight would have been adjusted. And you can see like um, this, this chart right here has a resemblance to the chart of the Luna price, right? Because as the price of Luna goes up, as the market cap of Luna increases relative to the market cap of AUST, um, the cluster is going to decrease the weight of Luna or decrease its exposure to Luna. Um, Okay, so most people don't really care about the weights, I think. Most people want to hear about the performance. How does it actually perform? Uh, one thing I want to point out, um, Lust is not going to be gaining value from volatility. Uh, the, the, yeah, I, I just want to point that out, okay? So um, the cluster is going to be 
increasing its ex its exposure to Luna on the way down, basically, and uh, decreasing its exposure to Luna on the way up. So it may seem like it's buying low and selling high, but actually it's going to be doing so at the same rate. So it 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 increases its exposure on the way down, but then on the way up it it decreases its, its exposure at the same rate. So you're not actually um, making money. It's the, the, the cluster token is going to be agnostic to volatility in terms of price, uh, but uh, your gains are going to come from a combination of the anchor rate and the increase in the price of Luna, right? So the AUST in this cluster is going to be gaining value because of the anchor rate, and the Luna in this cluster is also going to be um, gaining value as the price of Luna um, gains value, obviously. So that's how the cluster is going to perform, and here it is. So if you backdated this cluster to the beginning of the year, here's what you would get. This, this solid diagonal line, that's of course the price performance of AUST. It's going up because of the yield, but it's not volatile because of course uh, AUST is the same as UST. It's a stable coin. Um, this blue line right here, that's the price of Luna. We've all been experiencing the gut-wrenching volatility of Luna. Um, I've been loving it, but I guess not everybody has the same constitution. Uh, anyway, if you take the green line and you add it to the blue line, you're going to get this pink line, right? This pink line is the backdated price performance of the Lust cluster token. So if you had a cluster token, this is what your price performance would have been. And as you can see, this mutes or, or it partially mutes the volatility of Luna. Uh, it, it just reduces it. It makes it more stable. And for some people, that's good. Some people want this green line, right? Some people want this blue line. But I think, honestly, most people are going to want something in between. They're going to want the pink line. And that is lust. Okay, some implications. If I haven't already sold you on lust, then let me give you some implications. Like, lust is going to be a, collateral, a collateralizable asset. That's huge. You're going to be able to lend and borrow and collateralize uh, Lust cluster tokens on Edge Protocol. Edge Protocol is a money market on Terra. They are going to have a partnership with uh, Nebula to produce a protocol-owned money market. And this is amazing because uh, you know this Lust cluster token is going to be primarily comprised of AUST. So basically you're going to be able to collateralize AUST and lend out AUST. That's pretty sweet because you'll be making yield on the underlying UST, and then the AUST will also be making yield. Or you can collateralize it to borrow um, UST or whatever you want. Uh, this is going to unlock a lot of opportunity. And another thing, this is uh, Lust is going to be a very, very good collateral asset in the Terra ecosystem, because um, it's going to be good to hold, because it gives you some exposure to Luna, but the Luna volatility is muted, like I said, to a degree, so it makes it more stable, so it's better for borrowing against. Um, like, would you rather borrow against the pink line or the blue line? I'd rather borrow against the pink line because there's less volatility. It means I will lose less sleep worrying about my LTV. Implication number two, um, taxable events. Like This is an implication, but maybe you didn't realize it. Um, this cluster is going to be rebalancing between AUST and Luna with no taxable events. You could try to rebalance your portfolio yourself, but one, it would be a hassle, and two, you would incur all kinds of taxable events. Lust may be a product that some people hold for decades. Uh, the, weight, the, the weight is going to be in place, and the, the protocol is going to be rebalancing. So it, especially... Just consider people who are retired, like not young people like us who like to take risk, but older people or institutions. I think it would be fantastic for them to get some exposure to AUST with that fantastic yield from Anchor. And Anchor is always going to have the best yields for stablecoins in DeFi. And uh, they get that stability, but they also get a little price appreciation from Luna. But if, if Luna goes up too much, of course, it rebalances. They don't have to rebalance themselves. No taxable events. And then all you do, you don't have to worry about capital gains. You just sell a little bit whenever you need it. That way, 
you don't have to pay capital gains every year. You can just hold it. And that's pretty profound. Uh, another thing, this is even more profound. Lust is actually going to defend the peg, the UST peg. And that's at the heart of Terra, right? Terra is healthy when there is a wide gap between the Luna market cap and the UST on anchor, right? And Terra starts to get a little bit unhealthy when uh, the UST on anchor approaches Luna market cap, right? So if this is a UST, or in other words, all the UST on anchor, and this is the Luna market cap, if the Luna market cap and the AUST market cap start to converge, uh, that's not very good because Luna's got to have value, right? Luna has value and that gives UST utility. UST has utility and that gives Luna value. It's cyclical. That's how the peg works. Uh, people will get nervous. At the very least, if the price of, if the market cap of Luna ever starts to get really close to the market cap of UST, people are going to get nervous. So what this cluster does, right? Like I was telling you before with the weights, like it is going to increase its exposure to Luna as the, as the market cap of Luna converges with the market cap of AUST. You know what that means? It's going to provide buy pressure to Luna when Luna needs it the most, right? And then, of course, when they diverge, the cluster is going to reduce its exposure to Luna. That is profound. So I think, I think the powers that be in the Terra ecosystem, I think Terraform Labs and Hashed and Jump and other big players, I think they're going to put a lot of money into this cluster token. I think they want this cluster token to be really big because in addition to all the other benefits that I listed, it also is going to defend the peg. This the the growth and the size of this uh, cluster is going to is going to make the whole ecosystem better. It's going to provide another line of defense for the peg because if the price of Luna starts falling, the Luna market cap starts contracting, all the money in this cluster is going to start um, gathering up more Luna basically. So just imagine, imagine the salutary effects on the whole ecosystem. If this cluster were at a billion dollars worth of value, $3 billion, imagine if there were $3 billion in this cluster. And, and if the market cap of Luna ever fell too low, the cluster would essentially be selling a UST for Luna to put buy pressure on Luna. I think Terraform Labs would like to see that. <laughs> and if they want to see something, I think they're going to make it happen. I think this cluster is going to be very, very big. And I think Nebula is going to be big as well, because just consider this is going to be the first of many, many, many interesting, unique, fascinating, useful clusters. All right, th that's the end of the video. Uh, I'm going to have this three-part series, right? This is the first part. I'm going to have another one tomorrow, another one the day after. You can learn all about Nebula in anticipation of the full Nebula launch on May 10th, along with the uh, genesis of lust. So in conclusion, what is lust going to give you? Why am I so excited about it? Why do I think the TVL of this cluster will be huge? It's going to be a great gateway into Terra. It's going to give you auto rebalancing with dynamic weights. Very interesting. You're going to be able to lend and collateralize it. It's going to minimize taxable events and it's going to defend the peg. Um, the future of the Terra ecosystem is going to involve Nebula. I strongly believe that it is going to be a cornerstone of the ecosystem. And uh, on that note, goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow.